So the next county in uh, uh, in this part uh, of England, so South East England, is Buckinghamshire. Buckinghamshire also uh, more inland. It doesn't have the access to uh, to the coast. And the uh, uh, most important uh, town is probably Milton Keynes. Uh, this is uh, uh, one of the counties uh, that uh, has um, uh, Chiltern Hills, a very beautiful, picturesque range of, uh, of uh, hills. Uh, and uh, Probably the most interesting places to visit uh, or kind of places of historical uh, interest are uh, Stow House and Gardens, one of the most beautiful uh, gardens in England. We'll probably have like an extra feature on gardens at some later stage, but uh, uh, this one is definitely one of the best. Uh, from the 18th century, a work of um, a great uh, landscape designer, garden designer called Capability Brown. Uh, so what you see in the picture is all man-made. It looks perfectly natural. It's a beautiful place, um, which I also had the chance to visit. Uh, and uh, the palace is nice, but the gardens are absolutely spectacular with the lakes and the bridges and uh, little uh, little um, houses and, uh, and kind of mo mostly in a classical style. Uh, so garden architecture as well. Uh, another in interesting place, which I mentioned here is Chequers. Chequers is the official country residence of the Prime Minister. Of course, you may know now that the Prime Minister lives and works at uh, Downing Street 10 in London, but it's a relatively small place. So for any kind of official entertaining, uh, when we have, um, I don't know, official guests, uh, they invite them to this place. Uh, uh, larger house, a historical house called Checkers in Buckinghamshire. So then again, not very far from London, uh, but uh, a larger place, more conveni convenient, uh, probably also more interesting historically. The last county in this, in this part of England is Oxfordshire. And this is again a county which is full of historical interest and lots of places. Uh, and we will definitely return to this area of England um, many times during this course. So of course Oxfordshire, so the main city is Oxford, uh, mostly famous for the university, one of the oldest universities in the world, uh, which is really a federation of colleges. So if you go there, and I had a great pleasure of not only visiting this place but also studying there for a short while. It was a kind of, you know, library trip, nothing more. Uh, but uh, yes, I, I sat in Radcliffe Camera in this uh, famous round reading room of uh, Oxford University Library. One of the few things that the colleges share because otherwise uh, uh, most things are just uh, uh, in the hands of individual colleges. So uh, each has some sort of uh, dormitories, living quarters. Uh, they have a, a dining hall, they have a chapel. Some of these chapels are beautiful. They have their own individual libraries, but the main library, one of the few libraries that are eligible to the copy of every book published in Britain. Uh, and they never allow the books to be taken out of the, of the library. There is a story that one of the kings, uh, one of the stewards, I think, wanted to borrow a book from uh, Oxford University Library and he was, the, he was um, declined. He was not given the book. So you can go there and, uh, and uh, read in the reading room. That's it. Uh, another place which is quite uh, famous perhaps for the university life and for the sporting life in, uh, in Britain is Henley on Thames, so another uh, smaller town on the River Thames, which houses the Royal Regatta. This is the, uh, the place uh, I think where they start uh, the, uh, the uh, 
rowing teams from Oxford and Cambridge compete each year uh, on the River Thames so um, it's quite an event really and uh, um, people um, line the banks of the river to, to see um, the, uh, the teams going and it's uh, a kind of local sensation. Another place um, which we will visit again is Blenheim Palace. It's one of the UNESCO sites, so I'm not putting it here uh, because we will return to this. This was um, a, a gift from Queen Anne to her greatest military commander, the first Duke of Marlborough. And uh, uh, the name of the palace, Blenheim Palace, is named after um, one of the uh, battlefields uh, uh, in continental Europe where the, uh, the victorious battle was uh, was won against the French. So we are talking about uh, uh, very early 18th century uh, and uh, as a, a special royal gift uh, the Duke of Marlborough and his wife who was the closest uh, confidant and friend and a rumored lesbian lover of Queen Anne, uh, were given this, uh, this uh, splendid palace as a sign of recognition. We will talk about it later on. You may want to Google it now. It's, it's absolutely huge and very, very interesting. And now we move to another part of England east of England and here are the counties that are uh, that are included there so Essex, Suffolk, Norfolk, Hertfordshire, Bedfordshire and Cambridgeshire so another sexy place but uh, as you know now it's not about sex it's about the Saxons so Sussex was the southern lands of the Saxons and Essex is the eastern lands of the Saxons. Uh, so this is this is the place where we have um, Stansted Airport. So another uh, another um, main airport connecting London with the world. Uh, then we have. Um, the uh, the city of Colchester and uh, and Basildon. So these are the main urban areas here. Uh, Colchester was one of the places uh, uh, with uh, quite a lot of Roman presence. Uh, uh, there is uh, there is also um, an old castle. As you can see, not very imposing, but uh, uh, but uh, still there is an, uh, a castle and. and these areas in the south and east have a lot of history going very far back because uh, these were the, the places with a lot of uh, Roman presence and then uh, lots of things happening in the Middle Ages and basically throughout the history so all the wars, all the invasions and, and um, the, uh, the uh, evidence of, of history is there. And who is woman in the middle on the uh, on the photograph uh, um, with the caption Essex girl this is a stereotype really I found this woman because she, she kind of embodies uh, visually the stereotype and you sometimes hear about Essex girls uh, which is a kind of pejorative term of course uh, um, which uh, is a similar stereotype to a kind of dumb blonde so uh, pretty, sexy, but um, rather silly young woman. So um, I don't know whether the woman in the photograph uh, um, uh, has this characteristics, but uh, let's say a blonde wearing a, a bikini and, and showing her teeth in a broad smile might perhaps uh, embody this, uh, this um, uh, stereotype. So it's not a positive thing really, it's a kind of derogatory stereotype, uh, mostly referring to the, um, to the kind of working class uh, origins and, and uh, a certain type of, uh, of uh, young 
women who who flaunt the uh, sexuality and uh, and dress in a rather provocative way so that's uh, that's uh, another association with the area of Essex I'm not sure they live there but maybe next next two uh, places are Suffolk and Norfolk so folk of course meaning people so people of the south and people of the north uh, north and south of what the historical kingdom of east anglia we will talk about it later on so uh, they uh, form a kind of nice little round country with suffolk in the south and norfolk in the north so uh, again lots of interesting places really um, places like bury st edmunds Felixstowe, Newmarket, um, some places of geographical interest, of uh, let's say landscape interest, the Broads and Stour Valley, uh, a beautiful medieval uh, village of Lavenham, for example, still with lots of beautiful in the medieval houses and in great condition. Uh, so Bury St Edmunds, uh, one of the places of pilgrimage. We talked about the places of pilgrimage a little bit um, during one of the earlier uh, weeks. So this is the place where St Edmund is buried, as the name suggests, St Edmund being one of those early saints, uh, uh, an Anglo-Saxon king who brought Christianity to these lands, but then he died in a, a, in a battle with the Vikings. So uh, a wonderful medieval abbey was, uh, was uh, constructed to, to mark the place of his martyrdom and house his remains, and uh, uh, some of it survives. Well, they had the Reformation, so we'll talk about it, how uh, many of those uh, medieval uh, church buildings, abbeys, monasteries, cathedrals were destroyed, but uh, parts of it, like this wonderful abbey gate here, uh, survive. Uh, then we have a place of, I would say, artistic interest. We are going to have um, a class on, on uh, uh, the artists and especially the art of British landscape and this is one of the places which are very very important for this subject, uh, Constable Country. Uh, John Constable was one of the greatest landscape painters in the history of British art in the first half of the 19th century. So just as the Industrial Revolution was really getting in full swing, uh, he lived in Stour Valley. Stour is a river that, uh, that flows there. His family had a mill. Uh, so he was from what we might now call the middle class, but he wanted to be a, a, a painter and his passion really was the landscape and especially the places he knew from childhood. So the landscapes of, uh, of the Stour Valley, which now uh, really is uh, referred to as Constable Country because uh, so many of those places became immortalized in his paintings. Uh, then we move north to Norfolk. The main, uh, the main city is Norwich with this beautiful, uh, the beautiful medieval Gothic cathedral with a very characteristic uh, spire, very steep, uh, pointy spire. Uh, the, the city itself is quite interesting as well. Uh, what else uh, is there? Uh, another another Victorian holiday place called Great Yarmouth. This one was cheaper. As you can see, it's not in the southern coast, so the sea is definitely, uh, is definitely colder. Uh, so the price ranges were more uh, within the, re the reach of, let's say, the lower middle class. They could get there by train. It's still not that uh, far from London. Uh, there was a pier, there were lots of uh, attractions. It's still quite a uh, um, popular holiday spot in the summer with a kind of, I would say, kind of Victorian tackiness. Uh, there are some places which are connected with this kind of uh, lower middle class, working class, uh, um, holiday making and Great Yarmouth is, uh, is one of such places. We have uh, the Wash, the, the big 
uh, bay, so this this body of water um, surrounded by uh, by the land. So it's partially uh, here in uh, in Norfolk, uh, and uh, this is one of the places where uh, seals live naturally. So there are colonies of seals, uh, and uh, you can uh, you can. Uh, um, go on a trip in a little boat and there are all kinds of operators that, that uh, um, do that and you can go to some uh, small um, islets and, uh, and uh, wild places on the, uh, on the coast and see the seals. Yes, been there, seen them. Good fun. Uh, next uh, county, Hertfordshire. Hertfordshire. Um, Actually, you can see uh, the uh, the etymology on the flag. Uh, so a heart, that means a deer crossing a river at a fort. So heart, oh, here changed to heart, ford meaning the shallow place in the water, in the, in the river, and shire, shire um, the, uh, the old um, land division unit. Uh, the most important place there, St Albans, another uh, very uh, important uh, place of pilgrimage in the Middle Ages with this beautiful cathedral housing what is believed to be the remains of the first martyr in England. In the Roman times, like many martyrs, uh, uh, there was a nobleman who converted to Christianity and got martyred by the, by the Romans. And this beautiful cathedral stands still on the side of his grave. Another important place here is the Royal National Rose Society Gardens. So uh, I already mentioned that uh, that England is the land of gardeners and, and gardening is a national passion and especially the rose. If you remember, the rose is uh, such an important plant for many uh, noble families. It's, uh, it's included in the heraldry. You may recall the rose of the uh, the wars of the roses between the houses of uh, uh, of York and Lancaster, and each of them had a rose in their uh, in their. Um, coat of arms and then the Tudors uh, coming to the throne and combining the red and white roses uh, into the new design, the Tudor rose. So yes, absolutely, roses are a national passion and uh, the, one of the most important uh, places uh, for that is the Royal National uh, Rose Society Gardens. We will definitely have a, a, an extra feature on gardens at some uh, at some later stage because now we have two more uh, counties, Bedfordshire. Uh, this is the place where uh, the third big uh, big airport is located, Luton Airport, and uh, the main town is Bedford. Uh, this is also the county uh, with part of the Chiltern Hills, if you remember, part of it was in Buckinghamshire. Uh, they are actually uh, longer than the, uh, the uh, political division, so um, part of the Chiltern Hills is in Buckinghamshire, another part is in Bedfordshire. Um, not too many interesting things historically. Uh, they have this uh, uh, regional food called the clanger, which is uh, like a pastry with one side being uh, savory, some sort of meat and vegetables, and another one, another part of the same pastry being sweet, mostly apples. So, but we will return to uh, to the discussion of um, of regional foods. Uh, they have. Um, uh, an interesting thing here, uh, Leighton Buzzard uh, Light Railway. Leighton Buzzard is one of the towns, it's, uh, it's the name of the town and uh, uh, in several places in Britain on the old railway lines and, and historical railways have been, uh, have been um, rebuilt and, uh, and reopened and this is one of those places. This is also something uh, we may return to at a later stage, the great national passion for historical um, 
technical monuments, let's put it this way, so from the Industrial Revolution onwards. Uh, the last county on our list today is Cambridgeshire. Cambridgeshire, um, so another wonderful, very rich culturally and historically um, uh, place with of course the city of Cambridge uh, with uh, the university a very similar structure as Oxford so individual colleges with individual um, chapels the most beautiful is King's College uh, in Cambridge uh, with this beautiful medieval chapel uh, one of the best uh, gothic buildings in uh, in uh, England, definitely. Uh, but there are good contenders in Peterborough and Ely and uh, um, both these cities have cathedrals. Uh, the cathedral in Ely is one of the oldest uh, uh, cathedrals in, uh, in England. Uh, it's in this very early Gothic style or between, let's say, uh, the Romanesque and Gothic. It was built uh, in the marches, so in this kind of uh, um, um, wetlands really, and uh, Ely was a place of dry land, almost like an island. Historically, now the, the area mostly dried up, but uh, this was like a cathedral on an island in the marches. Uh, then uh, what we have is Peterborough, uh, another beautiful uh, medieval Gothic cathedral, uh, very well preserved uh, with some interests of, it, uh, of its own. For example, this is the resting place of the first wife of King, King Henry VIII, Catherine of Aragon. She's buried there. And uh, uh, the city itself is, uh, is quite interesting uh, as well. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, uh, and uh, Huntingdon, what, what Huntingdon uh, reminds you of? They have one citizen who made it to history and who even became the, the uh, member of parliament for Huntingdon and this is how his career started and it uh, kind of culminates with this man, the citizen of Huntingdon, killing the king. Who was he? Do you know? Oliver Cromwell. Oliver Cromwell, the leader of the, uh, the uh, parliamentary forces in the Civil War. So uh, you might say the man responsible for the beheading of King Charles I, later ruling England as Lord Protector. Uh, so he was born there and uh, he represented Huntington. Uh, a few more slides, just a few. One is uh, a historical map because you sometimes hear these things and uh, we will definitely return to, uh, to historical maps and uh, the way that these uh, divisions changed, but you sometimes still hear the term the home counties. The home counties, so here we have the, uh, the map of the area around London uh, from the late 19th century with the old division. Uh, so these are the home counties. The home counties are the counties surrounding London, basically, that's the idea. So Buckinghamshire, Hertfordshire, Essex, Berkshire, um, Middlesex that exists no more. They, they um, divided it uh, into the, uh, the um, other counties. Uh, Surrey, Kent and uh, Sussex. As you can see on the contemporary map, uh, it is uh, now a different location and uh, for once Sussex has been divided into two counties but uh, uh, this old division um, I think it's still interesting it's still interesting for historical reasons and, and definitely the term the home counties meaning the counties immediately surrounding London with a lot of um, historical monuments, royal residences, aristocratic palaces, uh, medieval um, places. Uh, this is this is really uh, this is really interesting and uh, and uh, still you can find it somewhere. Uh, the last place today, the Channel Islands. So the islands uh, further away 
from uh, from Great Britain Britain in the English Channel, closer to France, closer to Normandy really. Uh, the two main islands are Jersey and Guernsey. They have uh, a lot of political um, independence, so they are they are kind of self-governed, but they uh, belong to the United Kingdom, so they are, they are part of the of the larger political structure, um, without really belonging directly to uh, to the um, to the crown. So that's it. And now I would like to move to the extra subject that is the place names and the toponymy uh, of uh, place names in uh, in. Britain. So we continue in a moment.